Hello, Ken Spriggs here. Uh, starting or basically continuing um, a build, but starting a new part of a build uh, to build a larger scale Mandalorian to go with my smaller scale uh, child figure from NY3D Creations. Uh, I featured the uh, the small child in his crib in a previous video, the build for that, and completed it. And uh, in that video, I also, sh I also showed a um, vinyl figure of Boba Fett that I got from a company called Screamin that I'm going to use to adapt uh, into the figure for the Mandalorian. Uh, because he's going to be very large. He's going to be about 18 inches tall in order to be in scale for the child. So um, let me just kind of show you... Um, the uh, the original child and um, and then uh, the other figure that I'm going to adapt to make larger in order to work on this um, this very large figure um, what I'm eventually going to have is I want to do the scene uh, I showed a pic picture of it at the beginning of this video where um, the uh, Mandalorian first finds the child and you see him there holding his hand out pointing at the child in the crib uh, and IG-88 is laying on the floor next to him because he shot him in the head since he was going to kill the child. Uh, that's the diagram I'm going for. Um, I'm also going to be working on an IG-88 figure and I have some files for that as well that I found in order to have him on the floor as well. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the initial, the original child in his crib and then I'll show you what I've been working on here. All right, so here's the original NY3D Creations child in his crib. So it's a really good size. This is a one quarter scale. He's actually very small and the crib is very small. So um, I had to go back and look at the show because it looks like he's much bigger than he really is. He's pretty tiny. And when they show the Mandalorian handling him, he's real, real small. He's barely bigger than his helmet when he's sitting on his shoulder. So it's, it's a very small figure. The crib is pretty tiny as well. So in order to make an in-scale Mandalorian for him, he has to be about 18 inches tall, which is definitely going to be huge. So what I'm going to be mostly adapting is trying to print the parts from this Mandalorian figure. This was my first 3D printed figure from Carlos Martinez. Uh, and um, what I'm going to try to do, and I already printed some of them, is to print off parts of him, like his boots, his arms, his helmet, possibly like his armor, his chest, that kind of thing. And, um, and scale them up to be the right scale for the bigger figure. And then combine them with the, um, the Screamin' Boba Fett figure. And I'll have to do a lot of adaptations and a lot of modifications to make that work. And lots of epoxy sculpt. So... Um, I got a lot of epoxy sculpt in. <laughs> so let's go ahead and take a look at what I have on this so far. All right, uh, as I had shown in the first part of my child and crib uh, build from NY3D Creations, I'm gonna be working on building an in-scale Mandalorian to go with him. And um, so what I'm doing is I had shown before that I have the um, Screamin' Boba Fett figure. That's highly inaccurate. And I'm uh, printing out some parts from the um, Mandalorian, the first build that I did, in a, in a larger scale. Uh, and, um, and augmenting that figure with the, with the pieces. So uh, initially what I had shown was uh, this boot, this hand, uh, there was a helmet, there's a helmet I have, and also part of his chest. Now, I've tried a few more things. Uh, I tried printing his chest again in a little bit larger scale. For some reason, it failed right at this edge and stopped printing. And so I only got this part done. Uh, I'm working on maybe flipping it over and reversing it and printing from the top down and gluing those two together. Also, there was some problem with one of the one of the shells there on his belt that I can patch up and fix as well. So this piece is harder to print because it does not fit in the belt plate. So I have to put
put it on there and just print the parts that will fit. As you can see, it's cut off right there. So still working on that. That one's a little harder to do, but I'm getting closer. Uh, I printed the right boot in 160% scale. So that one is correct to where it needs to be. And then I printed the left boot in 160% scale because the first one I did in 150. And you can see the difference. It's bigger than the other one, definitely a larger, a larger boot. So this one I won't be using, it's, it's too small. As you can see, they don't match up, but I will be using the bigger one that I made. So what I'm doing right now is the um the left side of this figure is meant to be standing down on the base which is like a sand or rocky base and the right boot is propped up on top of the the horn beast skull so the right boot has some detail for the boots bottom tread which looks kind of cool the left boot does not the left boot is just smooth because it's just going to go down onto a piece and you're not going to see it anyway so what I'm doing is I'm cutting out some thick styrene sheet pieces and uh, molding them to be the right shape for the treads and gluing them onto the bottom with some AC glue. And I'm going to do that all around the boot. Just so you can see from the side, you're not going to see the bottom of it, but I want you to be able to see that tread like this. So the two are comparable in how they look as far as the tread so okay so let me keep working on that and um and then i'm starting to to cut parts of the legs off of the boba fett screaming figure so i can go ahead and start getting these glued into place and start doing my modifications all right so i glued on the right boot i didn't glue it on i used some epoxy sculpt and I fashioned an edge around it, looking like it's some type of a band around his leg or his pants leg, and uh, informed that into it and let it harden on there so that the right boot is, is attached. <clears throat> and I'm working on the left one, and I cut it up a little bit more towards the knee uh, because I'm designing it a little different than the... 3D printed Mandalorian figure uh, is detailed. Mainly because I realized that some of the parts on there are inaccurate. And keep in mind, his, his outfit has changed several times. It literally changed within the first episode so that his, um, he replaced his, his right shoulder pauldron with a, a shiny new one. Uh, then after the first episode, the second episode, he replaced several other parts with some shiny new parts. So I've been looking at some stills and looking at some different scenes from the show to try to figure out how it all looks. And there were some inaccuracies as far as like the right knee. Um, definitely the left knee is very different. Uh, they show sort of, well, the, the, the 3D printed one has something sort of like this piece that's strapped around his knee. But for all the images that I can see, it actually has some strips coming up, almost like a continuation of this strip coming up as if this band were around it and it comes up and then it goes off into a, a couple little angled parts on his knee. And there's no other detail on his knee other than the cloth. So I sanded a lot of that down. I'm gonna continue doing so. And I'm going to remove this. And then this is going to have the big thigh uh, metal guard. And then it's just going to be cloth down onto this with some other pieces coming up, like I said. So what I did was I took some styrene sheet, some thick styrene sheet, and I cut a strip. And then I glued it together with a piece on the inside that you're not going to see. Put a clamp on that, and it's dried. So this piece, I'm going to smooth it out a little bit more. And that's going to bridge the gap between the leg piece and the boot. And then I'm going to have um, that detail I was mentioning coming up and it's going to overlap right about over here where his knee would be. 
uh, and um, so I'm working on this and then I'm gonna get this glued onto here first and then I'm gonna use some other type of stripping in order to augment that and, and give it the image that, um, that I see in the actual figure. Uh, so let me work on that and then I'll show you some stills here in a moment as to what I'm going for. All right, so I glued that part onto the top of the boot, the rounded part that I made. I first tacked it on with some uh, AC glue. And then I used some five minute epoxy and just filled it in there liberally around it to, to make it nice and solid. So that's gonna stay on there pretty good. All right, so that gives me a nice base. It extends it up just enough. Now what I'm gonna do is go ahead and build up the extra parts coming up around the knee. So what I did was I started with some flat uh, square stock, as it were. Took two pieces, I used a uh, emery board to bevel the edges on either side, and then I just glued them on together at an angle. To kind of imitate this piece right down here. It's just a little bit larger, but I'm imitating the two sides of this with that groove in the middle. So those are gonna be coming up through here sort of matching up with that as though that were one continuous piece and going up. And then I'll make the other bits coming off of it, so. All right. All right, so I took the, um, the pieces that I made, I glued them first initially onto the back of this so I could create that little gap between them. And at that point, I still had these two pieces glued on the sides, but they were sticking straight out and it didn't look right. It wasn't curving around to conform with the ones that you have there. So I cut these back off and I sanded down the edges a bit. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put, I'm gonna glue these on at an angle so that they'll curve around and conform to it. And what I've done is I beveled that edge See, it's kind of flattened so that I can put that piece flat against it, like so. And you can kind of see how the pattern repeats. And it's going to angle out just a little so that it will match the angle of that. Like that. So in the end, it's gonna, it's gonna look like this whole band, which is held on to his boot, like a shin guard, goes up underneath this strapped on piece and continues up to his knee. And that's how that part's gonna work. All right, so there's also a curved part that kind of comes up to the front that, uh, that this goes over top of as well. So I cut out a piece of thin styrene to make that up. And let me wrap that around and show you how that's gonna look. All right, so I'm just holding it in place, but you can see how that comes up and produces like a higher up cuff in the front of this boot which will come up to meet that part that's gonna stick up that high. And there's gonna be an edge around the top of it that I'm gonna put on. But that's gonna, that's gonna increase the, um, the detail there on the top of the boot. It kind of reminds you of some of the boots that you see, like the swashbuckler boots that have the big flare edge coming up meeting their shin or their knee, and it looks kind of like that at the top of a boot. So it's similar kind of thing. But then there's these other pieces that stick up and act as a shin guard, so, okay.
All right, so as you can see from the previous stills, I completed the boot and I've gotten it attached onto the legs. There's the boot with the front detail. It's not completely accurate, but it looks pretty cool. And it certainly has a similar detailing to, um, to the, what we see in the actual show. And I have that cuff along the top and I put a, um, a beaded edge down around the bottom as well. And I use some epoxy sculpt to get it attached onto the leg. I, I have the legs at a different angle. Well, they were at a different angle. So I put the boots at a different angle as well. So one of them is standing flat. The other one is sort of off to an angle. It's kind of an action pose that he's in. All right. So those are done for now. I still need to do some more work on that knee and build up some of that. Sorry, build up some of that area there, as well as the rest of the legs, the thighs, and cutting off these parts and putting on the um, the proper plates and that sort of thing. So, all right, but that's done for now. So I'm going to put that aside and go ahead and start working on the upper torso. All right, so as I showed in an earlier video, um, I tried a part, and this is just a piece of it, some of it broke off, but I tried to print a part of the upper torso, just kind of the chest plate, as it were. And so I put it onto the build plate and just let it print, even though it was oversized and it wouldn't fit. Uh, so this one only got so far. Um, now this particular piece, the very first one I did several weeks ago, I had run out of resin and that's why that one had failed. Um, so I tried some other approaches and uh, this was the first one that I did. And you can see how it's sliced off in the back and on the sides because it wouldn't fit on the build plate. Um, now, unfortunately, it only, it only went up to this level right here. And also this part here didn't work out that well, so it kind of broke off as well. So I tried it again and I tried it with a thicker diameter of the walls, hollowed as well and it quit in the same spot again. So I was trying to figure out why it is that it only got to this one point. Uh, I tried it upside down, trying to print from the top down and maybe glue the two halves together, but that failed altogether. So um, I tried a different approach uh, and I uh, got with a fellow modeler on um, Hobby Link International. Uh, and he's kind of got me introduced into several of these kits, including this particular figure. I saw him building it originally. His name is Omar Baez, a uh, really cool guy. Uh, he's doing uh, some fantastic, amazing things in, um, in building uh, some 3D printed parts. He has a larger 3D printer as well, uh, the Epax. And um, so I contacted him to see if he can give me some ideas or even possibly print this for me on his bigger printer. Um, so uh, let me show you what I ended up coming up with. All right, so uh, Omar had a good idea. He, um, he's very good at going in and using some of the, um, the uh, 3D creation program software. I'm not sure what he used, but ones like Blender. Um, I think there's one called Fusion 360, something like that. But what he did was he ended up cutting the torso into four different parts. And he did it in the right scale that I wanted, uh, 160% that would fit on to my print bed. Uh, and then I was very successful in printing it. So I've glued this one together already, but you can see there's two halves. You can see that seam there up the side. So there was a the front, the back, came out really well. The, uh, the right shoulder and part of the arm, which can glow on there. And the left, and I'm sorry, let me make a correction. <laughs> I keep doing this throughout the video, so please forgive me on this. I'm looking at it so it's right, left, but really it's his left and his right because it's reversed. So if I say it incorrectly, just understand in your mind, just correct what I'm saying. So his left arm, <coughs> excuse me, his right arm, and, um, and this gets glued onto here. So it makes the entire torso. Uh, so I was very successful in printing this out. A lot of that really cool detail 
So that's going to go a long way in really making this figure uh, very awesome. And I can also adapt the arms in order to get them to fit on here as well and do the pose that I wanted to do. Um, so thanks again to Omar Baez. I appreciate it. Uh, some really good help on that and really assisting me in, um, in being able to make this part. And I don't have to keep fooling around with putting it on the build plate partially. It's not really the best way to go about it for sure because it, it tends to fail and then ruin your print and put uh, some particles or some bits into the, into the resin vat. Uh, and then you got to keep cleaning it out. So, okay. So this is coming together. And um, like I said, I have this glued together so far. I want to hollow out some more of this bottom. And I'm going to reinforce those seams on the inside. Get in there. With some five-minute epoxy. Sorry if you can't see that. So this will be nice and solid. So far I have some... Uh, CA glue and again another thing which I've gone back and looked at I keep calling it AC glue as if it's somehow electrical it's CA glue cryo anna whatever it is but it's CA CA glue we got our left we got our right <laughs> so every time I've gone back and looked at the footage I cringe at it um, so I do apologize but hopefully you understand what I meant in these and the scenes that I filmed, I couldn't really redo them again because of the, um, I already did some of the parts and put them together. Um, plus I have yet to master, and I don't know why I cannot figure out how to do it, how to put some little words across the screen briefly that, that correct what I said that was wrong. Uh, one of these days I'll figure it out, but um, definitely uh, getting towards building my figure here, so. Let me go ahead and work on some other parts and then we'll start figuring out how these are all going to go together as far as his upper body parts. All right, so as I had printed early on when I first started working with the idea of building a bigger Mandalorian, I printed his left arm. Uh, it's a little bit rough on some of the pieces, so I may reprint this again. Uh, but this is going to be the arm that's going to go onto this shoulder piece. And normally it's, it's over his, his leg for the figure and it's tilted this way. I'm going to tilt it just a little bit more to this way. And I'm going to straighten out that index finger. Maybe bend back this finger. So it looks like he's pointing. He's reaching out and he's putting his hand out and pointing towards the child when he first sees him. Uh, and then that's, this one's going to be pretty much just fine as it is. Uh, but like I said, I may reprint that again. And this time I'll leave like the uh, connector on there. I took it out on this one, but it would help to get it into this, um, to this opening right here. So we'll see. We'll play with that. Now on the, um, on the right arm, on the figure itself, his arm is up and over his shoulder holding his rifle and I printed out two copies so far of his his right hand holding the part of the rifle uh, and this is way too big for me to try to print so what I did was I printed it this way once it got up to here I stopped the print because it wouldn't have wouldn't have completed with the uh, with the butt of the gun uh, so I'm not sure if I'll be able to print his big long rifle or not and put that together we'll see but what I can do is I can cut around the hand because I want to have this hand holding a gun anyway his blaster uh, because he just blasted IG-88 in the head and he's laying on the floor um, so I thought about trying to rework the arm and cut it so his arm is at his side but I think I'm just going to go ahead and use the the arm as it is where it's up in the air and he has his gun in it but it won't be his rifle. So, so what I did was I printed his right arm. Um, and then the first one I printed had a really good clean side, as you can see here. But the opposite side was really rough and nasty because it's really hard to position this without putting a bunch of supports on it. And it just smooths out that detail. So what I did was I flipped it over 
and I printed the other side, printed it again, but I got a clean side, and this one's nice and clean. All little details, little teeny missiles or whatever those are. And then what I did was it was a natural seam right down the side anyway, and down this part of the plating. So I just cut them off with a Dremel, and, um, and so they'll fit together. Let me go ahead and put those together and I'll put them onto the shoulder socket and show you how that's going to look. All right, so the shoulder, shoulder when it goes into that key there, tends to hold this in place. And so when I glue those together, I can put them together nicely. Uh, and then those seams seem rather natural. And once I get this glued together and it's held down and maybe doing just a little bit of puttying, they won't be noticeable. And I can fill that in even with a piece of of styrene stripping, that sort of thing. And then the way this is going to go is this goes on his shoulder, obviously, and his arm is sticking up in the air. Now with the smaller figure, he has the rifle and the rifle's going back over his shoulder, uh, but I'm just going to have a gun in his hand. And so I'm going to adapt this part, like I said, and then that's just gonna go into a gun sticking up in the air. So let me put that on and I'll show you how that's gonna look. Okay, there we go. So just imagine that you're not having this big bulky part of his rifle there. It's just gonna be a gun. And it'll be pointing basically up in this direction. This direction. So the gun will come out and go this way. As though he's just holding it up in the air like this kind of thing. And then that'll be on his shoulder with his gun in his hand. So just a little bit of a variation, same basic idea. He's holding his pistol and, um, and he just got through shooting IG-88. Uh, and then the other arm, his left arm is gonna be on here and this is gonna be sticking out as if he's reaching out to the child. And he'll be positioned, obviously, standing in front of the, the crib with the child in it uh, in that particular pose, so. All right, so lots of work, lots of adapting, because obviously the stance of this figure is not right at all for the diorama that I'm doing. The size certainly is not where it ought to be. So I'm gonna to have to do an awful lot of um, adapting. I already have and I'll continue to do so. But um, I will continue to work on that and uh, kind of getting to the point very shortly once I figure out everything with the gun and how his arm is gonna be where I can start getting his whole entire upper torso put together and then um, and then start work, working on his waist and his his thighs of his legs and getting those built up as well. Okay. All right, so uh, I've um, created several more parts for this uh, 18 inch Mandalorian. Um, I found another file of uh, this character that I'm gonna use some parts from as well, another 3D printed file. The original one that I adapted, of course, was my very first print. Uh, it's by a uh, gentleman named Carlos Martinez. And um, it's a really, really awesome version, which um, I showed uh, of the Mandalorian standing on a, um, the skull of the horned beast. And um, that, that original print was designed to be about 12 inches tall. I printed it at uh, half scale at six inches, which I showed earlier. And this one here is at 160%, which is obviously much larger and it's been giving me a little bit of trouble. I managed to get the um, upper torso worked out with the help of uh, Omar Baez. So um, on this other print, there are some parts that I can use for it, and um, I think they're gonna work out well. Uh, one of them is um, the waist of this Boba Fett figure, which again is way, way just out of proportion. So here's his waist, his practically non-existent behind which is just flat which just it goes down into his beefy legs which just doesn't make any sense it's really disproportionate 
Um, and then of course this was the same width. Here's, here's his torso that came with it. And this fit on there, so yeah. So I don't know if the actual, I didn't go back and look to see if maybe the, the actor that played him, Boba Fett, was just really skinny or something, but they're just way off. I mean, you can see the difference between the two torsos, obviously, how thin that is and how, um, how beefy this one is. Yeah, so that wasn't gonna work. <laughs> That would have had been built up quite a lot. So I cut this off of the legs. Uh, and there's very little of this kit remaining <laughs> that I'm actually using. Which is fine. That happens a lot when, um, when doing this sort of thing. Because a lot of this I'm just figuring out as I go. So, um, so what I did was I just really needed the waist so that it would be the right size for the torso and have the proper thickness and dimensions and actual behind on it, which this one does. I'm not that worried about that roughness because I can sand that down and it won't be seen anyway with the cape. <coughs> so this part was rather tricky. Not because I couldn't get it to print. Um, I actually sat it on the build plate this way. Like this is the width of the build plate, knowing that it would cut off right there and I would Support it on the bottom because I didn't care so much about the back, but I'd get a nice clean front, which I did. Um, but it was the size. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of these prints, when you get them and you put them into the software, Cheetah Box, they're not necessarily the right size. For whatever reason, this one, every time I put a part in, it was way, way too tiny. And I had to scale it up and then just try to guesstimate the right sizes for it. So what I was trying to do is I'd have it blown up on the screen and I had a ruler and I measured the build plate to see that it was about the right size and kind of get an idea and even hold the part up to the screen and make sure it was gonna fit. So it took me several attempts to get it to come out to be right. So it would match up with this right here. So we wouldn't have a problem. As you can see, this is hanging over just a little bit. His actual waist should be the size of this waist, and this should be sticking out. It's an extra piece. So this one is too small. So finally, I got one done that is about the right size. Uh, also, I had to sacrifice how long it could print the bigger I made it, because I have to then fill in the rest uh, with epoxy skull. So I finally got it done. And um, I've gone ahead and attached it onto the figure. And you can see the big difference, the big gap that's in there. But that's gonna nicely work. It's gonna just, I can mold some sculpt right down and mold the legs, mold in between them, fill it in. I mean, the legs aren't bad, really. If you look at it, those legs are nice and beefy. They're about the right thickness with a little bit of adjustment for that waist. So they were way off for the waist that they had for him, which was way disproportionate. All right, so, so that looks pretty cool. Let me go ahead and put the, um, let me go ahead and put the upper torso and show you how that's gonna look. All right, and it's hard to get the whole thing in the shot because it's so big. But you can see that's a lot closer now. It's just a tiny bit bigger, but it's going to be okay. Once I get it in there, it's going to look fine. But there's going to be the upper torso on the waist and the legs. So I set to fill in the, um, the legs there with some epoxy sculpt and get that part to work. Let me set this down here. Oops. And I went ahead and hollowed out the bottom and cut it and sanded it smooth so it's going to fit where it needs to fit. That top part that just fell off, what that actually is, is from the second sculpt that I got. It's a piece of his scarf.
his cape, I'm sorry, not his scarf, his cape. Um, now the actual cape, I tried to fit it on there and see if I can get the whole thing to print, but it's just, it's even in three pieces. This part was actually attached to the torso from the other print, but the other torso has a nice, clean, smooth, shiny armor over the whole figure, so that wouldn't really work to print just the torso. So I just printed this part and cut it out. Um, so I'm gonna figure out some way to make the cape out of epoxy sculpt. So the way it's supposed to be is you have this part here where it's smooth, another part of the cape fits on that, and then the bottom fits on it, but they're just way too big at this scale to be able to do that. Um, and then I also put it on the helmet. I do like the helmet from this one a little better. It seems to have more of a, of a extended profile on the front, which I think is accurate. And that's a nice print. And then likewise, this piece will go into, this, into the top of the cape. So that's what I was mainly looking for. I had thought about doing something with, um, get in there, something with um, some cloth, but I just, I just think that's going to look kind of fake and not really match up with, um, with a static model. So I wanted something else. So this I can adapt to fit into this area and add some additional epoxy sculpt and some wrinkles so that it's going to cover this whole top area, have a nice place for the head to fit, and then I can put some kind of supports, maybe some wire or something, and then do the rest of it in epoxy sculpt, put some wrinkles in it, and, um, and finish the cape in the back. It's just hanging straight down behind him anyway, so it's, it's really not that big of a deal. It's just bringing down a bigger, bigger piece and putting a little bit of wrinkles in it and maybe um, putting on some rough detail or even painting it with some rough paint, that kind of thing. So, so that's the route that I'm gonna end up going on this. So he's coming along really well. Uh, the torso is pretty well set as far as the arms. Uh, also this particular file of the Mandalorian has his arm actually holding the pistol. His right hand is holding the pistol pointing straight out so um, that will actually work better. I can print that out and just cut off the, um, the hand with the pistol built into it. Um, I had worked out some ways to get a copy of a pistol that's larger, but it would have been hard to adapt the hands and work with that too. So, so this will work better, a combination of the two different prints. Uh, the very little bit of the screaming model that I ended up using um, but uh, he's definitely coming along pretty well so um, that's gonna go ahead and do it for this week uh, this is a obviously a very involved build so I'm gonna continue working on it quite a bit but also work on some other projects at the same time as well all right so that's gonna go ahead and wrap up uh, this part of the video for this build uh, a lot of work done on this a lot accomplished it's really coming along well i'm really happy with it um, this is going to be a, um, a somewhat long-term build obviously because there's a lot going into it and um, i still have to do a lot more sculpting on this figure and then of course i'll have to paint him and then i'm also going to be having to do a lot of the same things with the ig88 figure to print him out and then figure out how I'm gonna display them on a diorama. So um, definitely working on it, uh, but a lot of this is time consuming because uh, some of these prints that I have to print out or parts take hours and hours or even a couple of days to print out an entire figure. So, uh, so bear with me, I will be definitely working on this heavy duty, um, but I will be working on some other things in the meantime and, um, and getting those posted as well. So uh, stay tuned for that and um, also, um, go ahead and look out for WantaFest, which is coming at the end of May, which is an online uh, festival or um, um, convention for, um, to raise some money for WonderFest, which had to move to October, but also to give a nice online source for modelers to enter their, 
their models into some contests and uh, and, and see some presentations and things like that. So it's going to be pretty awesome. Um, so you can find that on Facebook if you go and you just search want a fest, the word want, W-A-N-T dash A dash fest. And I have a separate video where I talked about it as well. So check that out for sure. Um, but thanks to all my subscribers and um, stay tuned for more on this awesome Mandalorian build.